and welcome to my channel. Those of you who've been around with me a little while will know that I absolutely love portrait focal length lenses. Um, that's from um, A5 millimeter to 100, maybe a little longer on 35 millimeter or full frame digital sensor. Um, the issue I, I find is I prefer things closer to the 100 millimeter. Here I have a 90 millimeter Elmar on my Leica 3, or 3B actually, um, and here I have my ridiculous 100 millimeter macro lens on my Sony A7. I have a 180 millimeter sticker on my twin lens reflex, um, and I've been looking for a portrait lens for my 5.4 camera. So what I came up with um, was probably what I would describe as the silliest looking lens in the world. What we have here is the 250mm f5.6 Fuji Soft Focus. It's quite a beast. Um, it's heavy and it's huge. I'll show you it on the front of, of my uh, MPP 5.4 camera shortly. But this came on uh, a Worcester front panel. Um, and I actually imported this lens from Japan. Um, I think I've mentioned before on this channel that I think Japan's quite a good source of lenses that you simply can't get in this country. And this one came very, very quickly um, and was exactly what I wanted, but not quite what I expected because it is massive um, and took up the whole front of the camera. I've got a photograph here of it on the, the original Worcester board just kind of tucked on the front of the MPP before I actually did any form of modifications. It's quite scary. Take a look at this. A standard focal length lens for 35 millimeter is uh, around 50 millimeters and a portrait lens is around 85 to 100. Um, to get the equivalent for 5.4, you multiply by three. So you would be talking uh, 150 millimeter lens is roughly a standard lens for 5 by 4 and a 250 is roughly um, the equivalent of 100 millimeters on full frame 35 millimeter uh, but much 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 bigger I'm really lucky on two counts one that when I got my MPP Micro Technical, I got a spare blank lens board. I'm not quite sure what it was made out of at the time, but it turns out it was made out of uh, industrial nylon. And I'm also quite lucky that I have a fully equipped workshop to work in. Um, it's my day job. And so I obviously covered the um, lens board with masking tape, marked out the center on it, and then marked a 63 millimeter hole that I needed to cut out to take the Copal size 3 shutter, which is absolutely huge. Here I've got the uh, lens board in my uh, drill press, uh, putting a hole in there so I can put a fret saw blade through and cut that hole out. If it had been an aluminium lens board I've had to think slightly differently but it's a softish material so it's not really a problem. The issue with the 250mm lens is that it's not possible to clamp the lens board between the retaining ring and the lens as you would normally um, with a 5.4 lens that is. You put the lens through the board and then screw on the retaining ring behind it. Unfortunately that means that bits of the lens will interfere with the front standard of the camera. So you actually have to mount the lens flange on the front of the lens board. This is not a problem because it's got four holes in it. You'll see that in a minute. I have to say that sawing the 
uh, nylon wasn't particularly arduous at all quite exact but it really wasn't very arduous um, and didn't take very long maybe 10 or 15 minutes um, yeah I've got all the gear available to do it but you know it would have been doable at home if I'd have um, wanted to or had to with the whole cut I tidied it up with a Dremel uh, which wasn't difficult but was somewhat messy uh, I used the uh, original Worcester lens panel um, as a template and held it over the top uh, while I trimmed everything neatly um, scuffed up the edges of the Worcester panel a little bit but I'm not really worried about that and here we have the flange all ready to go uh, on the uh, front panel uh, all I have to do now is to drill holes for M3 machine screws I bought some 20 millimeter ones which I'm going to cut down to length um, so it's going to poke through the back um, but what I do need to do is I do need to make sure that the lens is going to be the right way up when it's m screwed into the flange and mounted to the front of the camera so we're going to fudge that together and mark that so I've screwed the lens fully into the flange and just marked where one of the holes comes so that I'm going to be able to have the shutter speeds and all the controls on the top of the lens board because the lens board actually has a tapered um, lip at the bottom on the um, MPP boards so we'll only go in one way um, I think most boards only go in one way I'm not expert enough in 5.4 yet, but um, that's what I believe. Anyway, so that's all marked up and I can drill the holes. There we are, holes drilled to uh, take the M3 machine screws, which as you can see there are way over length. Um, I got around that by drilling four holes in the piece of scrap material that I took out of the center of the lens board, driving the machine screws in fully and then slicing them off level at the back with a Dremel and then grinding them flush with my bench grinder. A bit of a neat nut with a file after. Here we have all the machine screws fitted, chopped off flush and everything ready to be screwed together just like this. At this point I should probably be laughing somewhat maniacally and going it lives but I'll just content myself with going it looks good and even the copal bit is in the right place. Yeah! And here we have the result. Yeah, it really is that ridiculous. Uh, here we have absolute maximum extension on the MPP including all of the the back extension there in order to get this to focus to um, a portrait uh, kind of close-up headshot distance but this lens covers I believe 10.8 as well as 5.7 and 5.4 so yeah it's one hell of a lens um, so I'm looking forward to using this it um, works on the same principle as a uh, rodenstock Imagon in the sense that it has something um, like unto a T strainer or a sink strainer built into the lens which uh, gives an interesting soft focus effect um, and as I said really looking forward to using it and I've got a couple of models interested in working with me so I'm going to be trying the 5.4 with real life people, yeah. So I'll take you along on that one. Um, and this, um, I'll do some close ups of the basket in this lens, and, or basket or, or tea strain or whatever you want to call it. And um, we shall see how this goes. I normally would show you result photographs at this point, but I literally haven't had a chance to actually take anything yet. Okay.
So, if you've enjoyed this slightly shorter episode, uh, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, think about subscribing. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon for another episode.